How are we doing, guys? Welcome back. So, we are doing fairly well. We did take a tiny bit of damage on that last mission, but it turned out to be not the worst thing in the world. The only one who really got extra wounded was the Justicar, who we're going to swap out for our assassin anyway, just so we can get a bit of testing done with her. Other than that, I'm continuing on this, so on we go. So yeah, we're going to have a first look at the Kaleidos. Again, I haven't played with her before. I have no idea what to expect. So let's find out together. At the very least, she should be more interesting than the Just Cut. It does mean we'll be a bit down in power level, I think, early on. I don't imagine they're going to be as powerful level 1 as like a level 4 or 5 Just Cut would be. That'd be a bit ridiculous. So, uh, yeah. Going to be an interesting experience, at least. We are at 10. We do have the Grandmaster Report in 5 days. We'd ideally want to end up on 13, so we're definitely going to do this. We can buy one item if we find a good one. The only reason we're going for 12, in case people watch the previous playthrough, I think we can get more assassins for two requisition in the Grandmaster reports now. So we're going to be doing that, essentially. Uh, other than that, not too much to say. As I said before, we're swapping you out for Calidus. her. I don't think we have any options for loadout at the moment. I am curious bringing a flamethrower this early on, like as a pistol, because she... Uh, the, unlike the incinerator, you can guarantee you're going to get close with her. Because, you know, you can literally walk up to the pack without triggering a uh, combat. So that'll be very interesting to watch. Everyone else, I don't think we have too much to change. We didn't really pick anything up as far as I remember. You just make sure, absolutely sure I'm not forgetting something. That's all the same. Armor's the same. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're exactly the same on all places. In which case, let's just get on with it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Target seed location identified. However, thermal readings register below safety protocols. We are no wolves of Benris, but such factors will not deter us. Elimination of these seeds is paramount. Ah, uh, now this used to be my favorite map. Partly because it used to be really simple. This seed spawn is going to be a bit more tricky. We're essentially going to have to take... There's a pack here. For those who aren't aware, a pack here. And then the two packs that are marked are a seed pod here. We're going to have to take the outside route. The problem with the outside route is trying to get around the back to avoid this pack. Because we are going to have to fight reinforcement pack as well. And we do not have enough gear to take all of them on quite yet. And levels. Levels are probably more important. So... We're definitely going to have to spread all. We have to take out this pack first. That's not optional. But we also finally get to have a ch chance to look at you. So, do we want to activate this now? Probably not. This pack normally clusters up quite a bit. And there are t there's like a pillar and stuff to deal with. And like There are ways of dealing with this first pack a lot easier than there are with the later packs. Which you want clustered up. So we'll save her stealth abilities for a minute. Interesting she doesn't talk. Kind of thought they'd give her voice lines, but 
I guess that was gonna be weird yeah. trying to put her in in a otherwise fully male cast other than obviously like the Inquisitor and the Tech Priest. But whatever. So let's have you move up to here. You will. Oh, there's the voice line. That was a bit. It doesn't make a voice line when you click on it, like some of the others do. Well, let's get this triggered then. Oh, that still wasn't enough. That just means everyone can get a little bit closer. And we'll have the play just trigger it. Taking position. There we go. The unfaithful are here. Ready yeah, we're saving the clay, uh, clay to scout, essentially. But later. Him being there is really useful for us, because he's just going off a cliff. The Overwatch is a little annoying, I will admit. Arms at the ready. But I still think the best option there is literally just a grenade. Why does... Okay, it was the same grenade. For some reason, I looked bigger when I initially clicked it than I thought a normal grenade would look. So, what is the best way to deal with this? Could grenade. Ideally, a grenade goes about there, but getting someone forward to that position is going to be a bit annoying. I guess from there you could do it, and you'd still be relatively useful in the rest of the fight. I essentially, knocking this guy off a cliff, knocking this guy out of Overwatch, and then... We'll just have to clean up from there. Is the plan. Whether it works out like that, who knows? The grenades are always a little... Because he could end up down here, which would be very annoying. As but... you come on. Hopefully he just goes flying straight off. Good enough. And that guy also came out into the open and they lost their cover. Like That, that is basically as perfect as we could have got it. So. That does free damage, which is not a lot. But is it enough to drop him? If you could lower those two, we could have a quite easy pick up there. So, how do we go about doing that? Probably the Purgator. Because he shouldn't kill them outright. We are basically trying to dump XP into the Kaladas, by the way. I'm not giving it to the Knights as much as possible. Obviously, we gave that one guy. It's just out. That's very annoying. Could also do it with you, but that'd be even harder to pull off. Let's have a teleport over here. Let's have the interceptor murder this guy. In an instant. And then work the rest out from there. Do we want to invest extra willpower? That does help out significantly. See if we get a crit, because that'll change things. We didn't. In which case, you do four damage on the attack. Okay. We do have this to do two. So we could have you move forward and then have her pick it up on the run pass because that doesn't cost an action. Her thing. And of course, there's the crit. Typical. Um, right. So, just double check I'm reading this right. So you could hop there for one. Pick him up. Aim for the eyes. That obviously has a very long cooldown at this level, but you have XP is judged. XP. Ooh, that is a much longer... Like, it's, a, it's not quite the cone I was expecting, I guess I should say. Because I was expecting a lot more... Like, difference differentiation okay so what can we do with this then knowing that that we don't have to get half as close as we have to we could maybe throw a grenade in there that would scatter them think 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 alternative would be to try and get to like here this is where previewing what you could hit would be very useful but obviously we're not going to be allowed to do that vulnerability picks those two up so let's get that down, because that's a guaranteed kill by extra long group. Grenade does that. That wounds that guy. 
and then we just need the intercepts to chip him if that's possible we obviously have to avoid our own perkter but this does in the end end up with clean uh, i believe nice effect that's it's very different than how everything else has looked in the game so far is the key point i'm trying to get at uh, um, so putting that to five, so it is worth the cyborg because that guarantees that she can pick it up with a grenade. A lot of maths for the first pack, but I was trying to save um, essential polymorph because I'd rather have that for later. So I'm assuming that resets all her timers. Because that's backup, and that should have had a four-turn cooldown. But it didn't. So, she gets a reload and her timer's back. That's kind of cool. So, let's now run forward. We're trying to avoid this pack in the middle. It's a pain in the ass to deal with half the time, unless you've got multiple grenades. We do want to use your grenades, because we left him with all the grenades last time, and that kind of hurts. Used, who've, we've used the Apothecary's grenade, we've used her, the Kaleidos' grenade. It's a very long... It's a bit long-winded to keep yes, saying Kaleidos. The Assassin's grenade. That's a bit better. So. Should be able to pull this pack this turn. Do have to worry about what it is. Taking a new form. <laughs> I just wanted to see what would happen. That's kind of cool. Um, so we don't have to worry about her pulling, although I don't think she will from there. And I don't actually know if I want to pull this turn then. Because the advantage with them going further back is they end up in this barreled area. Whereas where they are, it's kind of very open, so I'm tempted to let them move. Obviously, this means more turns are taken, but in reality, that doesn't matter that much at this level. We're only on Corruption 1. There isn't that much of a building threat from up here. And I'd rather do this smoothly yeah. than rush it and screw up. So uh, we're going to take our time. It does mean the other packs will move around a lot. You see they end up here with barrels next to them. And these guys, I think, patrol right. Unsure where the back in the middle patrols. Not because I've run into it. But we can move you forward without worrying because you don't trigger. Am I not getting vision from her? I wonder if that's a bug. I thought I would get vision at least. Once. I guess that's how you avoid um, trick them is because they would trigger on your sight line. So if she doesn't give sight, that's how they've programmed it. It's a little weird, I'll be honest, if they've done it that way. But uh, I guess it works for game mechanic purposes. Uh, yeah, just keep everyone together and moving forward. We aren't going to pull them this turn either. They moved quite fast, to be honest, because they were here all the way up there. So this turn we will either run into them, or they will run into us. One of those two is happening. We should be able to move here without triggering. So let's get everyone on that line-ish. I mean, we are going to have to fight that pack in the middle when we kill the last seed bearer, but hopefully we'll be able to kite it out. Particularly now we essentially have an AoE immobilize. Moving as ordered. <laughs> Targets near okay, so it doesn't give you line of sight, but you do get to see what's in them. Okay, that's kind of cool. So we've got another couple of heretics. So it's four heretics and a caster. That's good to know, and you can get as close as possible. Because we'll trigger, and then she'll have a go. 
<laughs> open with her, but I'll be honest, that doesn't really strike me as good. Like, because everyone else would be so far behind. I wonder if you had grenade range. Now that you know where they are, could you open up with a grenade? That would be a kind of cool way of doing it. I am with you. Okay, we're right on the edge now. So any movement forward, which is going to be... Let's move you one. And then have you move full to guarantee the pull this turn. There we go. Hopefully they should Rally scatter forward. backwards into cover. Although they could come forward because we're so far back in their eyes, even though we're right in front of them. That's where the immobilizing thing could have been an opener, I guess. Okay, so we can blow this guy off, no problem. Getting the guy at the back is going to be an issue. You get to have fun. Destroying their cover or getting them out of it should probably be a priority. So let's get you here. Got the reset, good. Knock these two out of cover. Hopefully, if we get the angle right, this guy can be placed in front of her so she can AoE those two at least. Unsure if it's going to happen exactly like that, but we can try. This guy should still go flying off. Okay, slightly off with over here there, but shouldn't matter in the long run. Go collect that seed then, I guess. And then we can have her finish up. Another foul seed claimed. Then injure him. Can we get anything to help out of it? Because I assume you guys don't get... Oh, you do get a... It has a cooldown. It has a quite a big cooldown, but it does do extra damage. And it can't crit. Okay, so they do get to crit as well. That's good to know. Uh, um, so doing that, if we can hit all three of them, that might be worth it. But she should then be able to one-shot the guy in front of her, then maybe stab and then death needles up top. Because this should be a kill. Uh, get a little movement out of it while we're at it. No! Cool little animation. Not quite how I imagined they'd do it, but hey. Wonder what that symbol is. Because it just happened a couple of times now where she gets that little symbol. Um, move around, stab him. Oh, does it ref... No, it has a cooldown. Okay. What if it counts as one and... Some of the timers. Every time she kills no someone. Because that was a thing she had, wasn't it? Yeah, she had a passive. Now I'm remembering. Yeah, that's what it is. So every time she kills something, she gets the cooldowns back. So she's not going to do a great versus him. Could murder that guy. Does that get the bonus? That does get the bonus damage. So we can do four to him. He dies. Problem is, getting a shot on him is going to be an absolute pain in the arse. Could commit the grass grenade. Could also just have you run up and hit him. But I need someone also to get on this guy. The easiest way of guaranteeing all the kills is to run yeah. forward here and use the last grenade, not on that guy, but on this guy to get him out of cover. Because he's being an absolute sod right now and hiding. Which makes cover, like, doing all cover fire work a bit harder. Okay. So we do have Quicksilver if we need it. Can I? No, I cannot Quicksilver her. That is something I was wondering. So she is like the Dreadnought. You can't buff her. 
little annoying, but I entirely understand that it's that whole thing is designed for knights. And no one else. I can't get a shot on that guy from this angle, so... I'm trying to figure this out. I could move forward. How much health do you have? 12. You do four. If I got you to here, you do four. Four, four, four. That guy would still be alive. Unless I quicksilvered. But if you're gonna do that, you do it slightly differently, I think. Yeah. You quicksilver, because you that's the only way to avoid damage in this situation. And I think you Quicksilver the Apothecary, because he has the most willpower to spend. Shoot up there once. Firing on ah! Then shoot this guy twice. Opening fire. I must sanctify my rounds. She kills him. The purest venom. Ah! The Emperor judges all. I do like the idea of getting cooldowns back from killing. At this stage, getting those kills is a bit hard. Really need her to get her upgrades for that. See, that's now on two of four. So that's now on cooldown. But this came off cooldown, so we can go back into that. They will pay me. Okay, just by the whole animation twice. I was wondering about that as well. Um, we do have that patrol in front of us. It might actually, as much as I said we wanted to avoid it earlier on, since proximity is going to be a thing, we might have to kill it regardless. That is going to be painful to do so. Because it's easier to kill this now then run into that pack on our own terms and then just either run away or kill reinforcements then get essentially pinned because this pack will move here, this pack will move there and we'll be chasing it the whole way around the bloody board. So get you forward. Let's get a look at it. Uh, can we get one forward, I guess? Unlikely we'll get into range of it, but we'll get a look at it, I think. Ooh, there's a Plague Marine in it. That's going to be a pain. Okay, so how far forward do we think we can sneak? I don't think we can get much further than the top of the stairs. No, we really can't. Okay. So let's get you there. Perkator up two. Yep, there he is. They should come forward. And presumably, that doesn't trigger on her, because she's in stealth. Enemy sighted. Let me test that. Yeah, because she's in stealth, she doesn't trigger overwatches. That's cool. Um, we do, however, have a bit of an issue of trying to get through this pack. We're going to definitely take some damage now. That is not a optional thing question of how do we avoid it best. Grenading that lot saves a fair amount of time. You cannot knock pillars. That's good to know. Do we have room for a teleport pillar knock, do we think? That gets you through the overwatch, so that's definitely a good thing. I must meditate. We do have a bit of room, but that takes all of our actions getting to there. That being said, that is still the most damage we're going to do. So we do one action to get to there. Take out his ranged weapon. If nothing else, that will reduce damage incoming. 
Could kill him, could knock the Space Marine. Knocking the Space Marine's probably worth more. The problem with doing that is it puts us dangerously close to triggering that lot. Getting up and disabling that Overwatch is probably worth yeah. something. Question of how do I want to scatter? Because I'm assuming that's... No, that might be half cover. It makes a difference because she ignores half cover with her weapon. So let's get them to scatter that way. Ah! That at least disables the overwatch that was directly on her. If she could move, we could spray and pray. I call it spray and pray. It's not actually called that, but... For effective turn. Ooh, that's really good. That hits four of them, actually. That's that's better than the spray and pray. Because we can use the other guy to just have the apothecary. Like, the apothecary will just kill him. It's not an issue. Um, okay. You run up and hit that guy. Is that two full movement? Uh, no, we can get behind him. Which is going to be worth something for trying to get shots later. As I said, I'm unlikely to be able to do this without taking any damage. It's a case of trying to reduce what damage is coming in. I'm assuming I can't damage boost this. No, but it does apply mobilize, which is worth something. Could run up and hit him. Could shoot him? Yeah, shooting him does a similar effect. And doesn't get me in the way of the spray. We, do, we could do this three times. So it does free damage. How much health do you have? A lot. Because all of this lot die if she fires three times. In which case, that shot was a waste. But shooting with this... Doesn't end up with him dead. Finishing that guy off is worth something. Dropping that on him, as long as he stays in the thing, that kills that marine. And then we've only got one guy with a thing left. Okay, so the mistake here was, if he'd shot him and managed to kill him, this lot all die without taking damage. But that was very hard to see earlier on. I believe that there is also the risk we pull that pack doing this. If that happens, we're really going to take damage, but... I don't want this marine alive. The foe bleeds. Okay, we avoided it. Oof. That had me worried. So. What do we think? Definitely do this. Could pop this. It doesn't really have a downside to not doing it, but they're all dead anyway, so I'm going to hold it for a turn. Might need that for the final pack. Death makes us stronger. Three or four of that. So doing this kills those two. Alternative is trying to move forward and stab him has the same effect. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. Th this works in a really weird way. I think. Go there, stab him. Don't need to do Death Strike because he dies automatically. This is me assuming I know how the cooldowns work. So that could drop him. Leaves him on one. But that kills him. So you do this. 
Okay, I like how this works. This is much more of the strategy, like, because most of the time in Chaos Gate, it turns into a bit of a mess of just, hey, I'm going to spend it. So this is a game of counting who gets the kills. I love it. It's also really cool. Very glad we picked her up. I don't think the Eversaw will play like this. The Eversaw will just be a constant, like, I'm going to hit people kind of game in it. I don't find that as fun in this type of scenario, because we already have that with the Interceptor. Interesting they turn into Pox burst, uh, walkers, by the way. I would have thought they'd turn into, like, cultists. Maybe she turns into better stuff later on. But, okay. So now, we are going to engage this this turn. Let's go figure out what's in it. Again, if we can pull them forward, we get to use these pillars. If we get to pull them up at the same time, that's even better. So I'm actually going to shift all of my guys up and to the side. Remember, we do have the option of trying to grab a seed down here. I'm not going to prioritize that right now. We've got other things to worry about. Okay, he can teleport, so he's fine being at the back. I'm going to shift you as far forward as possible. Apparently that wasn't far enough. I would want that because I don't want them moving from this spot. So I'm going to move you there and that should trigger it. There we go. And that should pull them to the right. Because they don't see anybody as an uh, enemy that's that far away. Commander, we've made contact with the enemy. Actually, can you teleport? You don't have a thing. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Where can you get to that's good? Ideally, if we can drop that pillar, all of this lot are super weak. But that's really hard to manage. And you don't have another vulnerability field. Okay. So if you do that, you can't quite hit two of them. Could do this. That's an interesting prospect. Knock him that way. Obviously, it doesn't do as much damage to the group behind him, but it, and it uses all of our movement. So, is there anything better we could do? Like, just a straight slam on you to then have you, the other pillar drop on you as well? That might be worth something. And then we can worry about the last guy later on. Okay, that dropped both pillars. That's annoying because that screws me up slightly. But it does set up a nice spread shot. Also, potential kill pickups all over the place. Um, if you got there, how many could you kill? Not enough. You could drop him, which doesn't do a lot initially, but it does get the portal spawned and also um, gives you a teleport option. And we're hoping because this is kind of dependent on how much damage we take now. We get a teleport off, and it gets the reset. Because that will change a lot if we can manage that. So you can set someone to 8. This is all now calculations. I think the best spread shot we get is from here. And that's the most damage he was going to do regardless. How long do you have on this cooldown? You need two kills to get that up. Okay. Could set that low. This does the most damage out of the one shot he gets. So let's get that out of the way first. Also removes cover, but I must that's not super important right now. 
two action points to go kill one guy. Or we could spray one to death now. But then we'd still need two to move in. Essentially, we'd need to be able to pick up two kills. We could pick up two kills doing that, but we'd still not be able to throw the needle anywhere valuable. Setting up the needle is what I'm trying to do here. Alternative is something like this. The war resists my will. One action point, which I guess has to be go hit that guy. Doing Hitting him does nothing. Could do two attacks there, but that doesn't... What range is this? Range 8, and that's range 7. So he might be in range of the needles, provided we can drop that guy. Slightly off on all the movement props, and that's very annoying. This guy's gonna live, so there's no point hitting him. So what we do... Weaken this guy. Melee that guy? Or just... Shoot twice from here. I think we shoot twice from here. All that charge and it's just pretty... We slay the darkness. Yeah, everyone's out of range, but we can do this again. Which at least keeps her safe. She has the least health out of everyone, I believe. So it seems a bit weird, but doing that does help out a little bit. Can't tie that guy up. No point armoring. But I am worried about this guy's health. I'd rather have the apothecary tank here. But I don't think that's an option. So let's just... Let's just hit this guy for now. This guy might take a whole bunch of damage. But it's unavoidable at this point. Kind of hoping for the crit there, but... Okay, if he's just doing that, that's fine. It's all on what you do. Probably shoots the Interceptor. Though he could just do an Overwatch. Yeah, he shoots. A little painful, but not the end of the world. That little chip is not going to matter in the long run. That's an all melee pack, so we can run away from them. They're more problematic. Actually, no, there's only one ranged guy in that. It's not as problematic as I initially thought. Okay, so you need to do a reload regardless. I'm trying to think of what I've prioritized cleaning up here. Could do with moving into range, but... It's not going to help out right now. Do you also need to grab that at some point? Right. Let's see where you can get to. You can get to there. Probably could take that guy out with it. Puff carry needs to... We're essentially going to be running from the packs behind us for the moment. Puff carry, get that heal off. Gratitude. Can run in and hit this guy. 
And force strike it. That lets a needle pick that guy up. That's going to be important, I think. Could do the. I oh, know we can't do the same here because we don't have willpower. That at least gives us a direction we can run in that's fairly safe. So, question is. Can we get any sort of shot on that guy? I don't think we can. Which is annoying. But can you run and grab that for me? That's mostly for the willpower, actually. The siege is not that relevant. But it does get him away from all the melee. Like, we could try killing them, but stepping out would get us into the zone of weakness, which is not ideal. Um, obviously, the guy, the caster is going to be worth more XP, so we can take that out with her. Yes. Okay, this, this works in my head, I think. Judgment. Obviously, we'd love to pick both up, but it doesn't let you do zero actions after someone's ended their turn. The golden throne. <laughs> He's gonna do grenade stuff. Pinned is fine. That guy literally is only gonna probably pop out the trench and spray shot anyway. Because <laughs> presumably they all group up. Oh, they all get to attack him? I didn't think they were that close. That's annoying. Barely a scratch. I didn't think they would get the attacks off. But I guess it was fairly close. Um, right. I mean, you can unpin yourself. I don't think that gives you the things back. The, the AP. Oh, it does. Well, um, screw you guys. Yes, <laughs> Okay, so I guess it's maximize damage. So what's left? There is a whole pack over here of including a pox burst. We don't want to have to deal with that. Could have you. I think that guy's in half cover. So if we shuffled forward, do we think we could hit him? I just want to try to get as many kills as possible, basically. Um, could teleport over. The problem is, without knowing where these guys are and not having a turn to react, we are almost certainly going to take hits over there. Let's get you out and away, because you're done, essentially, for the Moving mission. Now. Do one forward and hit, and just kill it outright. No problem with that. Foe destroyed, Commander. They are out of range of that, out of range of that. So why don't we just go invisible? <laughs> Obviously it's not invisible, but according to them it's basically invisible. And then just run and hide, because we can't act I don't think we can actually do any realistic damage. So everyone's just running and hiding. I like I, I do like the assassin. The issue I ha the issue I'm having with her right now is that I can't quicksilver her, which also means you probably can't on the chapter or any of that stuff. Okay, time bomb's not gonna be relevant because we're gonna be out of here by the time it goes off. These guys are coming running forward, which just leaves the shooter. 
yeah, okay, we're fine. We took some hits, but we did actually heal that damage, so technically a no damage mission. Don't think anyone will have got wounded off that. I'll be annoyed if they have. Might get the purgator wounded because of that slight miscalculation with movement. But we did get the seed and a willpower to then spray shot to get a bunch of kills out of that. So that wasn't exactly bad. But at least the assassin's fun. I'm kind of... Conf the thing I'm concerned about is the Vindicare. Because the Vindicare is a very straightforward assassin compared to the others. And I can't imagine myself having as much fun with him. Even though he will probably do a hell of a lot of damage in a, in a firefight, the lack of utility options makes him just a slightly odd purgator. At least in my head. So we can afford one of these if any of them are any good. That is terrible. That is okay. I do actually like that skull. That is, we've had that before, that's not great. That is an extra range silencer. With extra range on the spread shot? No, extra range on the spread shot once you've upgraded it. I think it's normal range otherwise, that's not that great. I will grab this, because we are using service goals for a bit. And I do need another option for them to use. Okay, I don't think anyone actually got injured, which is great. So you, what do you get now? Disable rain. That, that would have been useful. I love the way you get remove promotion. Like, it, you have a straight line of promotion. You don't have an option. But you see, like, it has remove promotion there. It's like... What else are you going to upgrade her with? Uh, you. Grenades. You... Uh, we've grabbed all this. Teleport could be fun and support fire, but we need to get down this crit tree. Like, now. Other than that, pretty good. We are a couple of days from the Master Report. A couple of days away from the Grand Master Report, if I could speak. Um, so, yeah. That'll do for this episode. Next episode, we'll obviously go back to patrolling in the middle and deal with that. So, until next time, see you later.